Um, oh, okay. Number five, investor-owned condos. Now, this is something fairly new. I haven't tried it yet, but I'm in the process. So, I, I believe it's not uncommon for a developer to build a bunch of condos. Then they sell the condos wholesale to a group of investors, typically. And then the investor may turn around and sell it retail. Or they may just uh, turn around and, and rent it out. So it may be it may be beneficial. Like if you were to ask ask uh, a, a very seasoned realtor, ask them where if there are any in your area, where are some condos that are majority investor owned. So what you would do is you would contact them because because chances are they're actually even out of town investors. So I'll tell you, like for instance, here in Champaign, there's there's a there's a condo complex or whatever you want to call it that was built. I think it just finished about just less than two years ago, about a mile from the campus of the University of Illinois. But um, what happened was pretty much it's like 98% investor owned, and the investors turn around and they rent it out to students. So I knew this like like a while back and it just dawned on me like a couple of days ago that I need to target these people because about 50% of the investors are out in California and that's key because the expense of living the cost of living in California is through the roof when you compare it to other areas of the country so therefore if I say I have a, a, a house that's $120,000 and I want all cash that's that's pennies to them when you compare it to someone in in Illinois and I tell them I want all cash. So that that's going to hopefully work out for me. So um yeah, target investor owned condos. If you're in a college town, I don't think it would be that hard to find them. Um number 6, cold call. No one wants to cold call, but I'll tell you what, it's really effective. And I'm I'm still new at it. I haven't I don't like cold calling either, but I, I had uh, started cold calling last week, or was it two weeks ago? Anyway, there was a there was a property that um, I had on a contract, and for three weeks I didn't have a buyer, so I was getting nervous, and um, I was just like, "Hey, I'm not gonna sit around and wait for something to happen. I'm gonna make it happen." So what I did was got on Google, I typed in Champaign, Illinois handyman. You know, got you know, you get ten results per page or something like that. I called up. I had, I think it only took me uh, like twenty minutes or a half hour. I called up all ten numbers. Out of those ten, I got three investors that investors slash handymen or handymen that knew of investors. And so you get to drift. Just call them up, tell them. Well, first of all, this is a tangent, but call them up and you tell them where they you got their number from. Say, hey, you know, my name's Justin McClellan. Uh, I saw your, your number here off a of Google search and uh, just wanted to introduce myself. I'm an investor and I see that you're a handyman, but I wanted to know if you also invest in properties. And then just kind of let them talk. They may say, no. They may say, you know, yes. Or they may say, no, I'm not, but actually I know of some investors. What, you know, what do you have uh, to offer or whatnot? But anyway, tell them where you found their information because I don't. In my experience, some people get defensive when you just cold call them, like their number isn't in the yellow pages. Like, like stop putting your home phone number as your business phone too, and then you get mad when people call it. Duh. So, but anyway, tell them where you found them. You know, the yellow pages, the internet, kind of puts them at ease and pads their ego a little bit. So, that's that. And... Okay, so that's cold calling. But yeah, don't stop at handy, man. You got appraisers, realtors, plumbers, electricians, all that. So actually, I, see, you need to have an assistant do that, for real. That's what you need to do. That's what I'm going to do. Um, I don't know how much cold calling I have in me. It's not in my blood. Craigslist. Craigslist is highly effective. This is uh, number seven. Craigslist. What you do on Craigslist is you advertise a property that you have under contract or... You advertise a property that uh, someone else has under contract. And then what you do, this is my experience on Craigslist. Don't put out some professional ad that has, 
HTML embedded into it and has all this nice stuff and, you, and a link to your website that's a squeeze page and all this. No. No, what you need to do is you need to make it very plain, Jane. Make it look like you're so busy making money that you don't have time to put all this effort into your listing on Craigslist. It needs to be like two sentences and very descriptive, cut, abrasive, and to the point. Make it make it be like make make it sound like Donald Trump wrote it. Like I'm serious. So this is what you would do. You would say like the heading would be like uh three two Cash only, must sell, exclamation point, right? So then in the, in the body of the ad, say, um, say, 3-2, cash only, like reiterate the header. 3-2, cash only, must sell, and then say, um, oh, then say, like, serious inquiries only, don't waste my time. Like, put that in all caps. Don't waste my time. Exclamation point, exclamation point, exclamation point. Put all of that in there and then put a phone number. However, here's the key. Don't put your phone number in, in the Craigslist. And I'll tell you why. Because they have these things that are called web bots, screen scrapers, whatever you have it. Everybody who's posting an ad on Craigslist knows what I'm talking about. Because when you post an ad on Craigslist, you get these automated replies that seems specific, but they're generic. What happens is you got a web bot that scrapes Craigslist and they automatically reply to your ad and they say, hey, I'm interested in your house. Please uh, go to my website and tell me more about it or something lame like that. So this, this is kind of the same and people do it with, with phone numbers too. I'm sure everyone's experienced a phone number that you've listed somewhere. This typically happens with cell phones. You list it somewhere on the internet. You, you probably have it somewhere. And uh, what happens is you'll get a phone call, and you, you pick up the phone. It's from a number you don't know, but you pick it up anyway, and you don't hear anything, so you hang up. I'm pretty sure that's somebody who who got your your website or your, your phone number off of a website, and they're checking to see if it's an actual valid phone number, if someone will pick up. And then what they do is they may sell your phone number to some third party. This is what I would do. If I was a if I was a spammer, <laughs> there's a big money in spamming. Too bad it's illegal, but there's big money to be made in spamming. But if I was a spammer, this is what I would do. I would, I'm getting off on a tangent, but this is interesting. So I would I would create a I would create a web bot, and what this web bot would do is it would go let's say stay stay with real estate. It would go through all the real estate ads and scrape all the phone numbers off. So now I got all these phone numbers copied. And then what I would do is I create some other program that automatically dials all those phone numbers. So I automatically dial those phone numbers. Then what happens is when someone picks up, I'm not gonna the the, the actual automation thing is not gonna say anything, but it's just gonna it's gonna call, you pick up, and then it's gonna say, hey, that phone number's good. And then that's fine. The people that don't pick up, goes to voicemail, don't don't worry about them. Then what I'll do is I'll take those numbers from from the the people that picked up and I hung up on. And I'll sell them to some third-party agency. Maybe I'll sell them to some, I don't know, some mortgage lender. So then uh, what happens is they already know that your number is tied to real estate somehow. So now you're going to get an automated call from some some mortgage broker or something like that with some computer operator on the other end saying, hey, would you want to refinance your mortgage, blah, 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 0.5%, something, something. So yeah, don't put your real number on Craigslist is what I took five minutes to say don't put your real number on Craigslist get a Google voice number and have it forwarded to your phone number or uh, or you can maybe not have it forwarded however you want to do it but use you gotta use the tools available to you to protect protect your assets and uh, uh, okay so last the last thing but not least everybody's heard of this at least you should have and um, you know they're not really that convenient to use, but they're highly effective, maybe more so than one through seven. But this is number eight. And it's these things right here. See? Yeah, so you get these signs, preferably about this size. You put them out <clears throat> on the weekends only, preferably. And uh, your phone will ring off the hook. So. 
that's uh that's about it actually um actually i, I want to hear what y'all think about some of these methods and actually if you have other methods so you know add to the comments give your feedback um friend us on facebook if you haven't already steph and i make a you know make us your friend on facebook i'm friendly she is too you know talk about how much you like my my chinchilla hat you know what I'm saying? But don't don't email me if you're from Peter. What? Do something. So that's it. I'm signing off. Have a good one. Happy New Year's to you. Peace.